Thanks for joining today for this um, Come Follow Me lesson. I want to do a, a little extra lesson because um, last week I did not get to cover chapter 35 in my lesson and I want to make sure we hit on the points that were, were covered, the doctrine that was in that chapter. There's a lot of stuff and it's really applicable to things going on in the world today and I really want to touch on some of that. So let's get to it. Um, after Amulek had finished his great testimony of the atonement of Jesus Christ and of faith and um, and prayer and living our lives in a way to pre prepare to meet God by not procrastinating the day of our repentance, he and Alma then went over to the land of Jershon. And then also the, the other brethren that went with them to, to preach to the Zoramites, that would be Ammon and Aaron and Omner and Zizram and Melech and two of Alma's sons, they also, after they finished preaching, returned to the land of Jershon. So what then happened to the Zoramites in the land of Antionum? Let's read in verse 3. And it says, And it came to pass that after the more popular part of the Zoramites had consulted together concerning the words which had been preached unto them, they were angry because of the word, for it did destroy their craft. Therefore, they would not hearken unto the words. So there's a lot right here to, to talk about. Um, they were angry. We've talked before about anger is a choice. So they chose to be angry. And why? Why would they be angry about something like the gospel being shared with them, the goodness of that? And the answer is because it destroyed their craft. And what was their craft? We learn, you know, that, that that means priest crafts. And priest crafts are those types of things that um, where people set themselves up, you know, with their preaching for a light into the world that they may get gain and praise of the world. They do not seek the welfare of Zion. We're told in First Peter chapter five, verse two, feed the flock of God, not for filthy lucre. So it's about sharing the word and doing it out of the love of our hearts and for the goodness of others to hear the message, um, the message that, that Christ would have us share. Not for us to be, become famous and rich and wealthy off people just sharing God's message. That's not right. And we're told in 2 Nephi 10.5, because of priestcrafts and iniquities, Jesus will be crucified. And he was. And then in Alma chapter 1, verse 12, were priestcraft to be enforced among the people, it would prove their entire destruction. So as we think about things um, going on in the world today, about things that are being enforced um, among the people, if it's, if it's things that are, are not righteous and the desire behind things is evil and wicked, it will prove the entire destruction of our, of our country. And we've got to look into that. We've got to understand and, and be prayerful and follow the prophet. Another um, chapter, 3 Nephi 16.10 says, the Gentiles shall be filled with all manner of priestcrafts. So I think this is important for us to pay attention to uh, what's going on in the world. What are we seeing when we, when we flip on the news, when we read the papers, when we look online at things? What kind of thing is being told to us? Are some of these things being forms of priestcraft? Is there wicked intents behind some of the, the, the things going on? We have to, to be in tune and, and decipher these things for ourselves. What's important to get here is that these people chose to be angry because the gospel interfered with their wickedness, with their power, with their self-centeredness, with their self-serving um, secret combinations. And we know that secret combinations have been around. We're going to talk more about that in some future lessons coming up too. But, you know, Satan has been around. And uh, he, ha he isn't going to cease. He's not ceasing. So the things that, that we read about in Book of Mormon times and in biblical times, those things are still going on today. So it was not enough for those who were angered, right, just to be angry and decide, no, I, I don't like that. That doesn't, that doesn't suit my purposes and and go on with their lives and allow other people those same freedoms to choose for themselves what they believed in. No, these people who were angry decided that they needed to control the people 
um, who didn't agree with them. And I think, again, we can, we can see how that applies in our lives today. We can see what's going on and how anger um, turns into, you know, such wickedness when, when people feel like they can't allow others their freedoms. Let's um, read on in verses 4 through 7. It says, And they sent and gathered together throughout all the land, all the people, and consulted with them concerning the words which had been spoken. Now their rulers and their priests and their teachers did not let the people know concerning their desires. I think there's another important point. We could stop there and talk about um, people not letting know the true reasons behind what they're doing. So this is what was going on with these people here too. Therefore they found out privily the minds of all the people. So here's this sneakiness going on. They're not being open, they're not being honest, they're not being upfront as to why they're asking them how they feel. They're, they're, you know, they're lying, they're being deceptive, and they're trying to find out with sneakiness. And it came to pass that after they had found out the minds of all the people, those who were in favor of the words which had been spoken by Alma and his brethren were cast out of the land, and they were many. And they came over into the land of Jershon, and it came to pass that Alma and his brethren did minister unto them. So the wicked and the priests, you know, the leaders and all of these, of these people just deemed themselves power, right, to cast out the righteous. Does that seem lawful? These people had their homes. They had their families. They probably had their businesses. They had their you know, their, their lands. And they were just being told they had, they were being forced out. We've seen this at different times in history too. And we have to be careful about what's being, you know, forced. Their mentality was, if you don't conform to what I'm saying, or what we are saying, these, these priests and leaders and teachers and, and the wealthy that were, you know, the, the more popular parts of the people, um, if you don't believe like us and think like us, then you're, you're cast out. You lose your lands. You lose your home. You lose, lose your liberties. And sort of what gave them the right to do that? That would be the question, right, that we can ask from this story. Does it sound familiar? Can we see these Book of Mormon stories sort of replaying in our world today? So I think it's important to think about our lives, what we can learn from this, how do, what do we apply to our lives, what, we, what can we learn, what can we be inspired to, to do, and how does it affect our decisions. The chief ruler over the Zoramites was a wicked man, and um, he wanted the people of Ammon to cast out those Zoramites that had come over to the land of Jershon. But when Alma and the people refused to do that, this, of course, angered the wicked wicked Zoramites even further. So they're already angry. They have to take their anger and go and control others and have their sort of temper tantrums and then cast them out and then try to then now control Alma and the Nephites and say, you know, we, we don't want you to let those people stay there. And they got even angrier. So they're, they're, just, they're just building and building and building in their anger. So what happens is it says the angered the wicked Zoramites even further, and so they began to join forces with the Lamanites to prepare for war against the people of Ammon. And Alma and Ammon and their brethren, and also two sons of the two sons of Alma, returned to the land of Zarahemla. And af after having been instruments in the hands of God to bringing many of the Zoramites to repentance, and as many as were brought to repentance were driven out of their land, but they have lands for their inheritance in the land of Jershon. And they have taken up arms to defend themselves and their wives and their children and their lands. And then in verse 15 it says, Now Alma, being grieved for the iniquity of the people, yea, for the wars and the bloodsheds and the contentions which were among them. Think about our cities. Think about our country. The contentions, the bloodsheds the killings, the lootings, the riotings, okay? These are things that, that hurt Alma's feelings, that hurt his heart. Um, he was sad for that. And I think that, you know, I'm, I'm sure our Heavenly Father and our Savior are up there now, and I'm sure it's not pleasing unto them. 
And it goes on and it says, um, And having been to declare the word, or sent to declare the word among all the people in every city, and seeing that the hearts of the people began to wax hard, and that they began to be offended because of the strictness of the word, his heart was exceedingly sorrowful. So there's that word offended, hard hearts and offended. I think it's important that we recognize what's going on, catch ourselves and say, are our hearts becoming hard in any way? Are there things that we need to do to soften them? Are we feeling offended in any way by things going on? Um, and what can we do to choose not to feel that way? I love what Elder David A. Bednar said. He said, to be offended is a choice we make. Think about that. It's kind of like anger. Anger is a choice we make. To be offended is a choice we make. He goes on to say, it is not a condition inflicted or imposed upon us by someone or something else. So people can say things and do things and there can be situations that are not pleasant. There can be things that are said and done that are not right. But how we respond is our choice. We have the power to choose righteous responses. All offense, all becoming offended, all getting my feelings hurt, all of that is fear-based. It is fear-dependent. Think about that. Ponder that for a minute. What does that mean to you? It is fear-based and fear-dependent. And I think we have to look into things that are being um, thrown on people. We've seen this happen in the past. When fear is instilled, that's when it's easier to start taking over and controlling people through fear. So as we allow faith over fear, we can, we can counter that. And it says, and fear contaminates faith. So living in fear is not the way that we want to feel. It's not a comfortable feeling. So as we turn to the Lord, as we pray to our Heavenly Father, as we strengthen our faith by praying always, by being open to the inspiration that the Holy Ghost can give us, and being in tune with those things, and studying our scriptures and reading and applying them to our lives personally, we can overcome the temptation to get angry, to be offended, and we can be at peace amongst chaos. And I think it's important that we, um, we look at, at the things that we can do in our life to overcome anger, offense, control, other than self-control. The need, when I talk about that control, I'm talking about the need to control others and forcefully get them to see your way or feel that you have the right to destroy and bring down others. That, that's not God's way. To soften our hearts, we can do that. We can overcome those hard hearts and we can soften ourselves and soften our responses each day so that we can avoid complete destruction. Our souls are important to our Heavenly Father. He loves us so much. And I think it's important that we take from this lesson um, thoughts that we thoughts that we can look to that are positive. We need to counter this negative energy with positive energy, this darkness with light. We need to look for ways that we can be instruments in the hand of God to promote positivity, to promote his love and his, and, you know, and Christ's gospel message is a message of love, of peace, of joy, the joy that repentance brings, that we can overcome the chains that will bind us down. We do not have to get sucked into the negativity that Satan would have us do. Um, we, we can be a light we can be that light that shines and radiates that positivity to others in their lives. And as we each do that, we can help the darkness and the evil to dispel. And I, I pray that we will each look for ways that we can be 
that light and shine that light of Christ um, in our world today and in our lives and in our communities and in our homes and in our own individual hearts. And I leave this with you in the name of our beloved Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.